Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JVD Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles, because today's the <clears throat> 30th of March um, 2020. So, yep, welcome, everyone. Welcome to this Monday's uh, morning uh, morning's recorded session um, where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts um, to see how everything's um, getting along this morning. Um, and how everything kind of closed on Friday as well. So, yep, um, as always, before we we do that, we do go further. Um, let's quickly have a read through our um, risk disclaimers. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, it should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, also just a quick mentioning um, of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we update as well on a daily basis. So, yep, feel free guys to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research uh, tab right there. Now then, uh, also just um, as it beca became a bit of a, a tradition now, um, now uh, here, I mean, looking at this picture, um, the coronavirus picture, now this is not really looking good here, it's not really getting better, and uh, well, I mean, we've managed to surpass the 700,000 number, and <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, of course, now the big question, uh, the, the, I'll just quickly refresh the page to see how it's happening. Yes, it grew a little bit higher here. Um, so yeah, the big question here is, of course, um, will we reach the 1 million number here? And to be honest, most likely, yes. Um, so yeah, this is not really looking good for now. Um, although, although some countries um, like Italy have managed to slightly reduce the amount of deaths and which is uh, which is a little bit uh, let's say on the on the on the good well which is a small positive let's say still I mean the death the death toll rises in there but um, you can see that they they're well below or or should I say, or should I say yes well be above the uh, 10,000 mark but uh, the uh, the one what's interesting here is the United States, for example. Now they have uh, they are growing rapidly, and their infection numbers are growing rapidly. Um, so yeah, uh, again, again uh, although their death ratio uh, is still on the lower side, uh, not a full two percent, um, but. Um, yeah, I mean, if it's not really, still not really looking good. I mean, <clears throat> this number could easily explode uh, to the upside uh, with suddenly, for example. So again, hope that's not the case. Uh, but yeah, it's not looking good here in the world. Some countries managed to slow it down. Um, so some European countries managed to slow it down. So yep, uh, yep, we'll continue monitoring those. But again, for now, guys, that's the situation globally. And uh, yep, let's see how this is going to continue further. Now, jumping into um, into some indices here. So the first one I want to touch on is the FTSE 100. Now, last week on Friday, I talked about this area right here, the uh, the 5,000. 500 zone and as you can see the index closed above this territory now what I talked about was that in order to aim for further declines, we needed to see a nice good close below this level here, and then we could aim for further declines. Now, uh, this level here, the 5,500 and uh, 5,500 level uh, is the lowest point of 2016, um, but as you can see, the index remained above it, closed the week above it still. So, yep, there is a there is a chance for the buyers to kind of step in and uh, potentially drive this one higher. Now, looking at the cash index right now, um, we can see that the price is climbing, uh, at least trying to climb back up here a little bit. So now it's currently tr uh, tr 
running at around 5535 zone um, so basically just slightly above the um, slightly above this this 5500 level um, but what I was talking about uh, last week would basically we need to see not only a good break a strong break above this territory but also a push above this <coughs> 5789 zone but however as you can see we did get a push there um, and uh, the index kind of really um, didn't really uh, kind of respect this level and then reversed back to the downside so in a way we can get rid of this area right now and just uh, f and then focus on the high of last week so probably this is going to be more relevant uh, and uh, the high of last week is around the 5815 territory so in other words a nice good pop above this area would confirm a forthcoming higher high and uh, yep we could aim for for further upside um, for further upside correction because still uh, if we mo see this one moving higher still this could be part of a correction because again the situation in the world right now in the in the, uh, in the economy is not really on the on the positive side uh, if we can put it that way and uh, that's why we could see just a temporary uh, rise here but then uh, there are a bunch of uh, resistance obstacles which could come into play for now um, yes we are seeing uh, a bit of a rise on the cash index uh, but it's still basically below this downside line here so yep keep your eyes on this one guys keep your eyes on this downside line and um, keep your eyes on the high of last week now if we do get a push above this barrier then yes we will aim for some upside if we don't uh, we'll still will remain somewhat neutral here because still for us to get comfortable with slightly lower levels we need to see a nice good drop and ideally close of a daily candle below the 5500 level so keep your eyes on that one now then, uh, the German DAX here, um, again, also like the FTSE is, it is also pushing a little bit higher, or at least trying to make its way higher. Um, it is currently balancing around the 9,720 territory, somewhere somewhere around here, basically. But um, as I've mentioned uh, last week, we need to see a breakthrough. One of these levels here, the uh, either a drop below the 9,141 zone uh, before we could consider uh, we could consider some downside, or uh, in, or in order to aim for higher levels, we need to see a push above this this barrier right here and uh, this barrier here the 10,280 zone and let me just show you what that level is that's basically the lowest point of 2018 guys so uh, very very nice potential target here uh, but uh, if we do get a break above this this would also place the the index above its 21 day EMA here and uh, yep we could see more buyers joining in however for now we will remain neutral as long as it stays in this all this territory right here uh, DXY very quickly on this quick update so uh, perfect move um, according to the plan uh, by yesterday oh, sorry yesterday on Friday um, I talked about this one and uh, basically what I was saying in the in my morning video in my traders espresso that uh, we could see a bit of a correction here to the upside and if the in if the index fails to um, to move above the either above the 99.80 zone, which is the uh, zero, zero uh, which is the 38.2% re, uh, retracement on the Fibonacci, or the 99.91 zone, which is the high of the 20th of February, or in other words, the highest point of February, then we could see another round of selling. So all this happened in one day. We did in the morning. We did get a nice uprise here at, at one point. And actually, in, in my trader's tea time as well, I was looking at this one, and uh, we were balancing around here. And what I was saying that if this territory holds, we could see another round of selling here. So, which happened, and we saw this one sliding. Um, the uh, the index drifted even below this other uh, area, important area here, in uh, the 50% uh, on the Fibonacci and the uh, the 98.71 zone. So, roughly around here, um, that that was seen as a good area of support previously, and uh, then it was seen as a good area of resistance, which it is doing right now. It's also acting as a good area of resistance. By the way, we can get rid of probably this um, uh, this Fibonacci now because we already managed to travel a lot. But um, what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, continue observing this 98.71 zone. Now, don't get me wrong. Even if we see a push above this, then doesn't mean that we're going to start climbing higher here again. Well because this this may travel a little bit higher here it may test the 21 EMA here on the daily chart 
which is shown as the yellow line. And if it struggles to overcome this, this could lead to another round of selling. Um, now, um, in terms of the um, in terms of the upside here, uh, probably previously I talked about this level here, the 101.15. But given that we've managed to drift uh, lower, and that given that the 99.91 barrier acted as a very good area of resistance, um, we will keep an eye on this one because a nice good pop above this could in a way lead towards further upside, and we could see this one traveling further north. So that's why for now, uh, be very careful here, guys. And uh, yep, let's see how this is going to play out. For now, we're keeping close eye on this 98.70 zone. Um, let's see if it continues to act as a good area of resistance. If it doesn't, then we could see a bit of a, an overshoot here and uh, a test of this 21-day EMA. Um, and if that holds, now this is where it could become exciting again for the sellers. So keep your eyes on this one. Uh, WTI oil. So uh, this morning, we we're moving lower. Um, last week, we've, we've drifted further south. But um, we still remained above that psychological 20 zone. So again, um, for now, looking at this picture here, it's um, really not, look, no, not looking good here for oil. And in a way, let me just adjust this little arrow here uh, because what we're going to do now is, of course, we're going to target further declines, especially if it, if the index, if the, sorry, if the commodity uh, closes below that uh, psychological 20 zone, and uh, then yes, we will, we will aim for further declines. Uh, there are a bunch of levels here now. Don't get me wrong; I do have some extreme levels here, like uh, like the 10.65 uh, zone. And uh, for all this, let me just actually quickly jump into a monthly chart because that will be easier to explain. Um, so the, if we do get a drop below that, uh, 20, 20 territory, and if we do get a nice daily close below that uh, psychological 20 zone, the next target to consider is the uh, lowest point of 2001, which is around the 17.12, 15 zone, approximately around there. Um, a further decline could lead to a test of the 15.61 uh, zone, which is the lowest point of April 1999. But as I mentioned previously, that 10.65 zone um, that's basically the lowest point of 1998, guys. So uh, you can see how far we have traveled. But again, for now, all eyes are on the on the uh, on that 20 mark. And of course, given that we are at the end of the month, given that we are now, um, uh, well, there we only have like let's say two days, two trading days left. Um, it's going to be quite interesting to see if the commodity manages to remain above the uh, above that psychological 20 zone because if it fails to do so well brace yourselves for further declines um, of course don't get me wrong at some point we will get this little correction here to the upside however for now it seems that it's not the case and uh, well I mean it could look quite gloomy for WTI oil. Uh, Bitcoin very quickly in here. Um, let me just jump into a daily chart. Um, so Bitcoin, I talked about uh, Bitcoin uh, last week on Friday, um, and what I was saying that keep your eyes, guys, on this uh, on this upside line uh, because if it gets a break and we see a drop below the uh, 6,441 territory there, there, then yes, this could this could open the path towards lower levels and. Uh, <clears throat> Basically, we could see this one drifting further south. Um, now you can see that this is exactly what happened. We managed to break this upside line. We dropped below the 6,441 zone and uh, we drifted lower. We didn't quite reach this our, our main target, which was around the 5,678 territory, which is the low of the 23rd of March. Um, however, not all is lost here still for the sellers. And uh, if the crypto continues to balance below the 6,441 zone, then yes, this could lead to another round of selling. So, <clears throat> basically, long story short, um, as you can see, it is correcting right now to the upside, but if it remains below the 6,441, then yep, we could see another round of selling and possibly even overcoming this uh, 5,678 zone and po potentially targeting uh, one of the support areas here. Now, one of which could be around the 5,261, 62 zone, or it could go further down, but we'll reevaluate this again. In terms of the upside, to be honest, uh, 
um, it's a little bit tricky even if we get a push above this barrier here the 6,990 zone then <clears throat> of course we could see this one drifting a little bit higher but don't forget that we do have this downside line here which could provide resistance so uh, ideally we would prefer to see um, and by the way let's get rid of this upside line we no longer need it ideally we would prefer to see a push of through this um, th this downside line here um, Jumping into a few pairs now very quickly, USD CAD. Um, here I talked about uh, the pair last week on Friday and uh, basically we were seeing on Friday in my trader's tea time, we were seeing a nice recovery here. Um, but what I was saying that if this area here holds, um, if it continues to pro provide these in resistance because previously it acted as a very good area of support, then yep, we could see another round of selling. So this is what happened. Uh, it drifted lower, it even overcame the one. 3986 zone but as you can see looking at this four hour chart um it didn't even allow the four hour candle to properly close below it so we had a nice rebound and now what we're seeing here is a nice little range forming so basically uh we will keep an eye on this uh we will keep an eye on the um on this on these two barriers and uh, basically if we do get a drop a nice good drop below the 1.3986 zone and uh, ideally we would prefer to see maybe at least a close of a four hour candle and then yep further declines could be possible um, however for now uh, we're probably gonna stay pat and uh, just stay neutral um, or should I say maybe a little bit cautiously bearish uh, because overall yes we are still trading below this downside line so the kind of the trend is to the downside however uh, in order to aim for lower levels we in order to get a little bit comfortable we need to see that um, confirmation break so or ideally a confirmation uh, for our candle close below this 1.3986 and then yep we could target further declines and uh, in terms of the upside, the the 1.4145, 1.4162 zone here, this is the area that we're keeping close eye on because if we do get a nice push above it and we do get a nice four-hour candle close above it, then yes, we will aim a bit for the upside. However, as you can see clearly, we are still below this downside line, so any up move here could still be seen as a temporary correction. We, in order to get comfortable with higher levels, we need to see a break of this downside line. Uh, GBP and ZD. So um, for this one, let me just jump back into a daily. And uh, I've looked at this one last week a lot, and uh, we've managed to climb higher here. We managed to push to the upside, but again, as you can see, this territory here continues to act as a very nice uh, resistance level which um, we will as well we will continue targeting and we will continue monitoring um, the pair came close last week to um, to breaking that zone um, but what we need here ideally is um, well at least four hour candle close above above this zone above this level and then yep we could uh, aim for further uh, higher levels this level is by the way around the 2.076465 zone um, then yes uh, if we do get a, a nice good four hour candle close above this then yes we will aim for some higher levels in terms of the downside the still still the same idea remains I mean we haven't moved moved uh, uh, much from this this scenario uh, the psychological two zone that's what we need uh, we need to see a drop below that before aiming for lower levels GBP USD so this is very interesting and uh, uh, last week or in general I talked a lot about um, this area here the highlighted one and uh, that's basically the the, the 1.19 1.1950 is the lowest point of, of of 2016 that's basically after the Brexit vote here um, and the 1.1880 that's the uh, the lowest point of May if I, I keep forgetting this one of 1985 because that's quite a long way ago um, this level here the yes the lowest point of May 1985 that's uh, that's how far we have traveled and we even even overshot it but um, basically long story short looking at this daily chart you can see that we had a nice rally here to the upside um, even if we see a decline here um, let's say lower we have already moved quite significantly from this area so most likely um, we may see a nice uh, close 
this month of this monthly candle above all this territory and what i was saying uh last week was that we'll keep close eye on this because if we stay above this territory then there is a possibility to see a bit of a larger correction to the upside um but if the uh, monthly candle closes below this 1.1880 territory then well i mean this could lead to further declines um so the um what we're going to see here is of course don't get me wrong we could see a bit of a correction however first probably looking at this <clears throat> how uh, comfortable uh, the pound is right now and uh, we could see to be honest um, a further move higher here maybe testing these emas here the 100 and the 200 emas here on the daily chart um and uh, then we could see another round of uh, selling so a little bit of a correction so long story short basically we're going to keep an eye on this little territory here around the 1.27 26 25 zone uh, this all this exactly coincides here with the uh 100 ema um, and all, almost coincides with the 200 EMA. So, yep, um, this area here could be a nice one here. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to monitor a this potential scenario where we could see, <coughs> excuse me, guys, we could see a bit of a um, an uprise here, maybe test of this area, and then another a nice uh, drift lower. So keep your eyes on this scenario, guys. Of course, don't get me wrong, we are quite overstretched here, but still we do have some good room here uh for a bit a bit more upside and to be honest this area here could play out as a very nice uh resistance level um in terms of G, um, um, ADUSD here, so again, uh, also similar story. What I talked about, uh, what about what I talked about with around surrounding GBPUSD is also a key, a very important key level to watch, and that's the 0 0.6009 zone. That's the uh, the lowest point of uh, 2008, basically. Um, that's the level here. So uh, what I was talking about that if the monthly candle remains above this territory, then yep, uh, we could see a bit of a correction here going into April. So um, as most likely we will see a nice uh, close above it. However, don't get me wrong, you can see that currently um, well, currently the, the pair is getting a hold up near the 21 EMA here on the daily chart. So, um, hmm. um, now this is where it's going to become very interesting, to be honest, because we still have two days left. Now, this is not a huge um, kind of area to cover, let's put it that way. So, we'll probably, we will be a little bit more on the neutral side on this one. We're, to be honest, we're just going to observe this one because uh, for now, it's not really, we're not going to try to squeeze something out of it. It, but um, we're just probably going to wait and this one out until the end of the month. Uh, it's only two days um, and then we'll do something with it. But for now, um, at the moment, I mean, it's, it's a very tricky spot here. Yes, it is above this key area of, of support, um, the 0 0.6009, which is the lowest point of 2008. Um, and uh, But it's getting a hold up near the 21 EMA here. So <clears throat> probably we'll just continue observing this one because it still also has some room to travel higher now <clears throat> if um, the dollar weakens um, if the dollar weakens and the uh, and the market kind of stays at the same as it, as it is right now then yes we could see this one climbing a little bit higher the I mean talking about the equity market stays the uh, the same as it is right now then yes we could see this one traveling a little bit higher just on the on the whole kind of dollar weakness um, but Mm, for now, like I said, guys, it's a very tricky one because if we do get a nice push above the 21 EMA, then yes, we will aim for some higher levels. But to be honest, we do have some good areas of resistance here. So uh, for now, we'll probably uh, be very, very neutral. And finally, Euro USD. So uh, here, let me just jump into a four hour chart. Um, now then. Um, the pair drifted higher on Friday, exploded nicely to the upside. It managed to overcome this barrier here, the 1.1087. I talked about this one on Friday, and we managed to travel higher, and we managed to reach an area around here near the 1.1147. So that's going to be an interesting level to watch. Um, however, first, 
um, the uh, well actually let me just get, get put this one back on the chart here the 1.1087 um, because as you can see the uh, the pair this morning is sliding a little bit to the downside but finding very good support around this area so um, if we see a drop below the zone then yes we will aim for another correction here towards the 200 EMA or this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 22nd of March and now <clears throat> now in a way um, if um, if if it doesn't if it doesn't travel below the 1.1087 um, of course be very careful because we could see this one reversing sharply to the upside and and uh, <clears throat> for those who are more on the cautious side uh, wait for a push above the 1.1147 zone here and then target the upside because this would confirm a forthcoming higher high However, uh, don't target way too far uh, because initially we'll aim for the 1.1189 or the 1.1236-37 zone, which is the high of the 16th of March. So um, again, these are going to be levels for now because, um, don't get me wrong, we could see a bit of a correction here at some point, uh, but for now we'll probably be very careful and keep an eye on some of the levels. And, and the levels for today will be the uh, this one point. Uh, 1087 if we see a drop below this then yep we will aim for these for these 200 EMA and the 100 EMA or this upside support line but if it stays above this 1.1087 and starts pushing back towards the high of last week near the 1.1147 a nice good break of it would confirm a forthcoming higher high and yep we could aim for slightly higher levels for now let's keep an eye on this one and uh, st and be careful okay guys i really hope you found it useful and uh thank you very much for sticking around and watching it till the end if you want to uh, catch my video later on at, uh, at around um oh we have changed the clocks right now so um yes um let me just quickly double check something guys and uh, yes so if you want to catch my video um, around 13 15 after 13 uh, 15 GMT time um, and then yes guys then yep uh, we'll have a look at the uh, some of these instruments some new ones and then we'll see how everything got along but um, for now I hope you have a wonderful trading day guys stay safe um, and uh, yep let's catch up uh, a little bit later today um like i said uh, try to catch my video at uh, at around um 13 15 uh, gmt time okay thank you very much and bye bye